DGS Goats in the house. All right, great to see everyone. I wanna make sure we have a lot of information that I wanna make sure students know before in-person return or if you're staying virtual, but before school kind of changes up next Tuesday, the 19th. All right, let's get right to it. Lots of information. I am blocking the most important person of our safety protocols, which is face mask person. So uh, it's important to wear your face mask over your nose. Uh, you'll, you'll see us giving reminders about that. Come to school with your face mask on. Most important way that we can prevent the virus from getting transmitted within the school. Six feet of distance is vital. You'll see us giving that reminder in the hallway, in the classroom, the desks are apart, whether you're shooting hoops with Kai outside a recess. Also, wash your hands, uh, and we're gonna wipe down the desks before we leave the class. We'll be washing hands when we enter the school, before we eat, two important times. Just wanna make sure everyone knows that. We're gonna be going over this more in some of our safety protocols. All right, other things to know, things to bring. I mentioned the mask, bring that. Computer, if you have a, a school issued computer, bring it fully charged to and from school each day. If you've been using your own computer, there's a place in the survey where you can let us know that. We're gonna have a computer waiting for you when you get to school, so you can use that. Your computers, your own computer, your MacBook might not get onto our network, just easier to use ours. Bring a water bottle because you can't use the water fountain. Bring a jacket because sometimes we'll be going outside for recess and for lunch, even when it's cold. Bring pencils and notebooks so you don't have to rummage around through our teacher's supply. Food, of course, you're welcome to bring a snack. If you choose to bring a lunch, that's fine. If not, there's a school lunch, we can provide you with that. Our schedule. For all students, virtual and in-person, is 8.40 to 3 o'clock. Um, uh, arrival time is 8.20 to 8.35. You don't want to get here at 8.40, you'll be late. Seventh graders, you're coming through that same door you did last year off the blacktop by the sign. Sixth graders, you'll be coming off of Galena on the east side of the school. As soon as you get dropped off, you're going to want to head right into the school so you can go right to your class because our classes are actually where we're at our safest because we can be socially distant. Um, if you do get there a little bit early, try not to. We don't want you there at 8.15. Just make sure that you're staying socially distanced. It's a virtual Friday for all students, 9 to 1.20. It's a half day. Basically, same schedule, four blocks in a Friday celebration. Um, for virtual students, whether it's your assigned day or your virtual day, if you have electives uh, that week, um, those electives are optional for our virtual students so that you can have a little bit of an extra break. 8.40 to 3 is a little bit longer than we would probably have planned for for our virtual students. The other one is if you're having a regular ILT class with a math teacher, literacy teacher, science teacher, uh, or um, social studies teacher, uh, those classes, um, you don't need to attend those virtually uh, for your ILT time. Again, so that you can have a little bit of a, a break because we know we've uh, elongated the day. If you do get extra support for gifted and talented, for learning English, or you see one of our mild, moderate special education teachers, uh, we do want you to attend that virtually. Uh, other parts to know, just some deets. Uh, Ms. Miller and I are going to be going over more information about back to school on Thursday at 9 a.m. You're going to access the Friday celebration Zoom link. Uh, that link will take you to a meeting with Ms. Miller and I on Thursday at 9 a.m. There's no other classes that day, nor the classes on Friday. We're just preparing for in-person return. Um, some students have asked, are we doing recess? Yes, we're going to be doing recess. I'll talk about that more in that meeting. And if you missed the elective preference email, in the sixth grade, choosing between art and gardening, or in seventh grade, choosing between PE and music. That's in your email inbox. Um, that also got pushed out in Spanish and electives if you missed that on Tuesday. Lots of information. I want to explain the way that our rooms are organized. There's desks are as spaced out as we can. Got 18 desks in the room, but only 17 students will be in at a time. Some students will be given a desk number, like desk number eight, and they're going to be in desk number eight which is kind of in the same basic spot in all of their classes that they travel to throughout the day. A lot of students have something that'll say like desks one through three or desks uh, four, five, or six. And what those students are gonna do is when you come to school, you're going to choose one of those open desks. If they're all open, then you choose one of them. If there's two students there, there's only one left, you're just gonna go to that other one left. And we figured it out so that one of those three desks would always be available. And then that way, we're going to be able to uh, allow for our cohorts to change because people have different assigned virtual days, but also keep you near the same students each day so that you're less likely to be near a student. If the virus does come into our school, we don't want you to contract it. We don't want you to give it. 
So preventing you from have, being near too many students is a great step. But I just kind of wanted you to see this visually because I'm going to go over it on a form a little bit later. Uh, this is our schedule. Um, it's been shared with students, with parents. It's on our website. Uh, if you're in class 6-4, you'll see that you'll start your day with Mr. Matt in his literacy class in room 215. Then um, Miss Hannah, will, she'll actually be coming to pick you guys up uh, for that science class, which is further down the hall. So you can see your schedule here. The good thing is for students, you only really need to know your first period class. Everything else is pretty simple because you're traveling as a group. And I want to know, I want to show you where you can get that information. So this right here is our student cohort document. And uh, it has lots of features. You can find out, you know, are you designated for in-person or, uh, or virtual? Uh, what is your assigned virtual day? So you can see your assigned virtual day. Maybe um, you're um, a student um, like Blake, and I can see, okay, I'm in cohort 6-5. So I can go to my cohort, and I can see uh, who else is in my class. It lets me know that the assigned virtual day is Monday. And what that means is you're in person on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But then remember, everyone is virtual on Fridays. It also tells you what your first period class is. In this case, it's uh, the student either chose art and they would head right to room 226 when they arrive in the school, or they or they chose gardening and they'd head right to 207. We'll have staff that's there on the first day to say, you know, oh, 207, gardening's this way. But you need to know, don't come to school if it's your virtual day. And you want to know what your first class is. You're also going to want to know what desk number you have. So Blake, in this, in this instance, he's assigned desks one through C, one through three. So when he comes to school, he would sit in one of these three desks because uh, it told him he's in seats numbers one through three. So the only things you need to know are your assigned virtual day because you don't come that day. You want to know what your first period class is so that we can make sure you get to that right spot. If not, don't worry, we'll have staff with these schedules and they can help you. And then you're going to want to know what desk numbers you go to just because that'll make everything smoother. But again, if you forget, we have staff that'll have this information as well. I'm looking forward to getting a chance to explain more of this uh, in our meeting that I have. Oh, uh, one more thing. Um, student ambassadors, uh, this lets you know what is your student ambassador day when you're just a little bit more tuned in to making sure the camera tracks the speaker. Uh, that's on that document as well. Um, so uh, thank you to our student advisors for volunteering for that. Uh, I have a few questions in this Google form that I want for you guys to answer. So let's get to that. 